Welcome, friends and foes, agents and totally not suspicious NPCs. Let's talk about Deceiving. Social deduction first-person shooter battle royale hybrid that seems to have cast a spell on the Dead by Daylight player base and beyond. Every so often, the DVD player base has a lover's spat with a funny Canadian to make the part looping game, and decides, as the collective amorphous self-hating mass that it is, that now's a good time to start window shopping for other games to try out. Most of the time, this involves gravitating to another horror asim that hits the market for a little bit whenever a company decides to challenge behaviour's monopoly in the subgenre. Video Horror Society gained a lot of traction last year, before fumbling the bag harder than Jonah Hill, to the point the dev company that made it has effectively imploded like a Titan sub. Evil Dead the game is still dragging its gut along the ground like a seal, somehow persisting with new content despite Saber clearly not being interested in maintaining the game anymore. And something tells me Texas Chainsaw Massacre is going to go through this phase as well. Don't worry, I'm making a video on that at some point, just bear with me, I'm very very busy. But despite all three being very different games, they all broadly fall in the horror asim bracket, which explains their appeal to the DVD player base. Something that Deceive is very, very far from. So with the arrival of its second season, the new agent Sasori, and a duo queue mode added recently, now's a great time for me to do something I've wanted to do basically since the game came out, and really sink my teeth into Deceiving. What is Deceive's deal? Why has it caught on with a lot of DVD players? And is it the kind of game for you? Let's get stuck in and find out. If I had to describe the gameplay of Deceive Inc. in a single sentence, it would be a hero-based extraction shooter enabled with a veneer of a social deduction game. You play as one of a roster of agents, each with their own selection of weapons, passive and active abilities, and a disguise kit to disguise yourself as NPCs to complete objectives while figuring out who in the large crowd of other NPCs is a real player trying to do the same thing that you are. Throughout the match, you collect intel or keycards to unlock doors, and disguises the right NPCs to breach secure rooms and deactivate the vault terminals. Opening the vault, allow one player to collect the package, the game's final objective that will alert everyone else in the lobby to your location. If you escape with the package or kill everybody else in the lobby, you win. To help you accomplish this goal, you have two things that you can use to help you be on your character-specific customization choices. Two spy gadgets like a bounce pad, a tripwire, or automatic turret, and collect your power ups you can take from safes in the map using intel to give you buffs like extra health, bonus ammo capacity, and the ability to recover health while doing social interactions. Don't ask me what the workplace culture is like at Sweet Bandit Studio where taking a shit counts as social interaction, but that's by the by. With the shifting objectives, from the vault terminals to the package to the extraction points, Deceive Inc.'s objective system reminds me a lot of Evil Dead's with a large amount of HUD space and map info dedicated to making sure you as a player know what the fuck you're doing, and where the fuck you're going. One of my favourite features Deceive has is a navigation mode, which not only shows you relevant objectives like vault terminals and nearby ammo and healing stations, but automatically plots the most direct route to whichever destination you choose to set, which combined with the ping system to make it kind of difficult to get lost on maps despite their large size and labyrinth of corridors on maps like Hard South and Diamond Spire. The game also has full voice comms alongside a ping system and a comprehensive HUD to let you know at all times what your teammates are doing, where they are, and what gear they're carrying. It's worth noting that good navigation, objective and communication features aren't inherently going to make your game friendly to newcomers. Evil Dead had all of these features and more, but still found itself with severe new player retention issues because the fundamental game itself is absurdly complicated and doesn't have many skills transferable from other games meaning it has a significant barrier to entry for brand new players. Sure, it is a third-person shooter with looting and vehicles and stuff, so Fortnite players will know a bit of what they're looking at, but the melee combat system, fear management, and just about everything to do with the demon in any capacity requires knowledge specific to the game. The, the game isn't exactly forthcoming with unless you go and look for it. This, combined with the game's significant grind and paid DLC characters, means Evil Dead is difficult to get into and struggles retaining new players. As much as I love Evil Dead the game and definitely prefer it to Deceive, I can't ignore these issues and accept they're probably a huge reason the game is struggling so badly right now. Deceive on the other hand has become extremely welcoming to new players by pretty much doing everything that Evil Dead doesn't. As a first person hero shooter, there are a lot of transferable elements from games like Valorant or Overwatch, and the starter characters all use guns that are pretty typical first-person shooter weapons like pistols or sniper rifles, meaning newcomers will for the most part not have to start from scratch with the game's combat mechanics. 
In addition, the grind to unlock characters is pretty forgiving, even if unlocking all their upgrades through the mastery system can take ages. About as long as levelling a demon to level 50 in Evil Dead, or getting about 9 prestige levels in Dead by Daylight. Although it's worth remembering a character's progression isn't as important as it is in a game like Evil Dead or DVD, because increasing your mastery doesn't give you direct stat boosts like Evil Dead's level system, and there's no add-ons or perks you are not through the system like DVD's Bloodweb. Instead, upgrading your mastery just gives you more options for your passive expertise and weapon choices that are side grades from the default as opposed to upgrades. For example, my Madam Shu is Mastery 10, but I'm still using the passive and expertise that she comes with by default, because they're the ones I find to be the most useful and helpful to me personally. They fit the way I like to play her. This I think is the single biggest reason Dead by Daylight players have clicked onto this game so well. Dead by Daylight players are predominantly, well, Dead by Daylight players. They don't often want something to replace DBD in their lives, the sunk cost fallacy has gripped them too tightly by the dick for that. They just want something to play when DBD isn't going the way they wanted. Maybe their favourite killer just received three new counters in less than two months. Maybe a skull merchant held them hostage until the server timed out. Or maybe they're just tired of pretending to have fun playing Freddy, and just need a game that they can pick up, put down and pick back up again and everything from the forgiving grind to the easily accessible mechanics to instant queue times caused by Wild West matchmaking allow Deceive Inc. to be a casual player's paradise. And this is where I'm going to start talking about something that immediately drew me to Deceive Inc. The game's distinctive art direction and character design and how it integrates with the game's unique mechanics. Deceive is a spy game to the core, and it features tropes and ideas common to spy fiction especially classics like old Bond films that we would consider cliché today because they literally set the trend for an entire genre. Deceive takes a lot from the 70s Bond films under the early days of Roger Moore's tenure, when the franchise is arguably at its lowest point. But why Deceive chose this era of Bond as their background setting of choice is reflected in the nature of those criticisms. So much of the typical 70s Bond fare, like Moonraker, Live and Let Die, and The Man with the Golden Gun, saw the franchise devolve from the Connery era of the character, and contemporary critics have heard that at the time. All that's left of Bond formula here is 007 character, sexy starlets, and gee whiz gadgets. This series, which has been scraping the bottom of the barrel for some time, is now through the bottom. Over tricky, uninspired, these exercises show the strain of stretching fantasy well past wit. These films lacked an actual quality and mutated into a form of self-parody, where the elements typical to a Bond film were rendered down and concentrated regardless of the quality of the end product. This creates an awful setting if you want an actually good film, but an absolute playground for homages, satirists and parodies. And this is where Deceive flourishes. Everything from the flying cars to the trick wristwatches, to the rich bastards with secret bases and dastardly schemes to TAKE OVER THE WORLD! It's just got the right amount of cheesy self-awareness to be endearing and instantly recognisable without being cloying, or inaccessible to people who aren't big fans of the subgenre. This extends even to the game's lore, which can be found in tidbits throughout the game, and most cleanly viewable in the character bios in the main menu. I'm not going to spend too long on this, but if you'd like me to, I'll certainly make more videos on this game's characters if you're interested, and this video does well, so share it around. Deceive's agents form a large and charming ensemble cast of international super spies, and you bet these spies at the top of their game all have a foreign language or two under their belts. And if you were ever interested in picking up a language for yourself, today's sponsor Babbel might be just what you need. We live in a more globalised world, where talking to people across borders or even across oceans has never been easier, but language barriers can be much harder to overcome. But they don't have to be. With Babel on your side, you can connect with new people or reconnect with old friends and family in their native language, or even have an easier time experiencing the joys of foreign cinema, and Babel are scientifically proven to help get you there. Their lessons, designed by actual language teachers, have been demonstrated to help you start learning a new language in just three weeks. And with a 20 day money back guarantee and two free classes on top, you've got nothing to lose but everything to gain from giving Babel a shot. Ich bin seit 10 Jahren Deutsch gesprochen. Aber in letzter Zeit leiden nur sehr wenige Gelegenheiten zum Üben. Dank für Babbel und meine Liebe zu Fremdsprachen ist zurückgekehrt. Aber trotzdem bin ich ein bisschen uh, rusty. To get Babbel and start learning a new language today, just click the link below and you'll get up 60% off when you do. Vielen Dank für eure Zeit und reden wir weiter über Deceive Inc. In short, Deceive Inc. is a multinational corporation with a monopoly on the espionage industry. 
The world's governments have collectively decided that national secret services are kinda cringe, actually, leaving Deceive Inc. as the world's information brokers and infiltration specialists. And there's plenty of spying to be done, with villains like Jati Bin Tay and the Evanson twins using wacky technology or government secrets to plot for world domination. Deceive and its correct team of agents from around the world is the only thing standing between them and their dastardly goals. But there's a quirk to it. No matter how many agents are sent on a mission, the one who actually physically escapes with the package is the only one who gets the payout from the company. This naturally creates infighting among the agents and acts as the lunar narrative justification for Deceive's gameplay of spy on spy action. The idea of Deceive's arbitrary and bizarre payment policy being the driving force of the gameplay is treated with the absurdity such an idea demands. If it was taken seriously, then you'd have to question the logic of the world in which this is happening. But by creating a world that's at its core deeply unserious, this nonsense policy goes entirely unquestioned, and it's great that way. This wacky, almost cartoonish tone is another way to see ties itself to the classic 70s spy history, like the Roger Moore era of Bond. These films frequently contained villains and plots that were ultimately farcical, the kind of things that never tried to be realistic or grounded in favor of something more in the vein of very soft sci-fi. Bond nowadays is pretty gritty and grounded for the most part, with villains and storylines that depend on a veneer of realism to deliver genuine emotional moments. But Deceit dispenses with that totally to create its mad, self-aware world that works on the same logic as the mad, self-aware films it's based on. Admittedly, a lot of the more unsavory elements of that era have been phased out. I mean, like, the game's femme fatale character Red isn't called Muffica Humpton or something, so times have definitely changed quite a bit. Deceive brings the self-aware pulpiness of the 70s Bond movies together with modern day sensibilities and additions that integrate very well together. For example, Jati Binte, the VIP on Diamond Spire, is an influencer who has made an extra addictive energy drink, and Deceive is trying to steal the additive that makes it addictive. Now we know influencers didn't exist in the 70s, but if they did, a plot like this sounds like the kind of thing they would have made a Bond film about, and they'd have Roger Moore saying something like, Save that one for the gram. It isn't just Roger Moore films that get their homages in, mind you, though. A great example here is Chavez, who's a riff on black exploitation spy flicks from the time, like that man Bolt or Cleopatra Jones. A lot of black heroes and heroines in black exploitation films had particular pains taken by the writers to show that they weren't stereotypical single parents, drug dealers, and homewreckers. And Chavez follows suit by being pretty much the only deceived agent whose home life gives him any sort of depth or motivation, as he just wants to get home to his girls. If you want to watch a great 70s spy film in that sort of vein, by the way, 1973's Cleopatra Jones is pretty good, or at least way better than all the Bond movies that came out in the 70s. Despite her super spy lifestyle, Cleopatra remains dedicated to her partner Ruben and her drug adult community who remain a major part of the story throughout its runtime, giving her an esteemed part of a legacy of black spies with a big heart inherited by Chavez today. My favourite thing about Deceive artistically is how it manages to expertly pick and choose what elements of its source material to keep unchanged, what elements to modernise, and what elements to fully throw away to create a fun, self-aware world of spy hijinks without falling into the same pitfalls that Tuxedo and Martini spy films of the era fell into. This even boils down to the music, which is a mixture of classic 70s movie homages with plenty of brass instruments and the kind of sound effects you'd only imagine Roger Moore raising an eyebrow to, and lo-fi beats that tie the new together with the old and allow the music to integrate seamlessly with the gameplay. A great example here is the default background music during the different phases of the match. In infiltration phase, you're sneaking around trying to be inconspicuous, walking with the crowds and the music fits in time with the walk cycle of the characters, letting it slide into the background of your perception so you can focus on scanning the crowds for anything that looks suspicious. It's noticeable and atmospheric but doesn't pull you out of the experience of playing the game. This switches up when you reach the extraction phase though. We're not going to be running around in a panic trying to get out or catch the other players before they do. You throw caution to the wind, most of the time stealth isn't going to do anything, so you start sprinting. And the music starts to speed up to keep in time with your sprinting. It's the tune for action, and it showcases amazing attention to detail to almost all aspects of this game. Which segues us quite nicely back into the gameplay again. With many of Deceived's combat mechanics and gunplay being pretty similar to existing hero shooters, 
What sets the team apart from its contemporaries is the disguise element and the expertise and skills of its various agents. Disguising is the bread and butter of Deceive, and you'll spend the majority of most matches in disguise. One feature that I find to be severely underappreciated about the disguise system is how your NPC disguise is always facing the way you're moving, instead of the way you're looking. Meaning you can look around as much as you want without giving the game away to the other players, or you can even manipulate your movement to convince an enemy that you haven't spotted them yet. You start off disguised as a civilian, but to access the secure parts of the maps like supply rooms and vault terminals, you'll need security clearance. Disguising yourself as staff, guards, elite guards, technicians and the VIP will let you enter certain locations without being inspected by other NPCs. Although any sort of suspicious and decidedly un-NPC actions, like walking while crouched, jumping and eating food, will give the game away to any players who might be watching. Side note, I've got no idea why the VIPs serve food at their functions that nobody ever eats. Maybe it's a really weird way of spy checking? Nah, it doesn't make sense. In any case, much of the game's skill requirement is found in the balance between navigating the map successfully to get the objectives done before the other players do, and not looking suspicious and drawing attention to yourself unnecessarily. Sometimes it is the right play to totally defense with stealth and go all out on the offensive, and at other times it's better to hold your fire and let other people do all the difficult work for you so you can swoop in and get the glory and the package. What strategy your favor will depend on both the state of the match and your agent whose weapons and passive and active abilities all set the characters of Deceive apart. The cast of agents is broken up into four categories. Vanguards like Chavez and Squire, who are your jack-of-all-trades characters. Trackers like Ace and Cavalier, who specialise at, well, tracking and isolating other agents for a quick and efficient kill. Disruptors like Yumi, Hans and the new agent Sasori, who are at their best in protracted close-quarters engagements. And scoundrels like Madame Shu, Red and Larson whose kits let them catch players off guard or escape a fight going south so you can re-engage on more favourable terms. I'm not going to go through what all the characters do because this video is more than long enough and not only do they each have their own weapons, passive and active abilities, each of those weapons and abilities have three different varies that you can mix and match to your heart's content. You start out with Ace, Chavez and Squire, who's pretty much designed to be the starter character. But unlocking all of them is a pretty speedy grind and before long you'll run out of things to spend the game's free currency, credits, on. My personal favourite characters are Madame Shu, a mysterious Chinese businesswoman and crime kingpin who may or may not have had a hand in creation of Deceive Inc. itself, and who can teleport between bodies with her expertise, and Ace, who's pretty much the Widowmaker of this game, if Widowmaker was a Middle Eastern mercenary rather than an emo French blueberry. Deceives agents form a diverse and charming cast of characters. We don't know that much about any of them, which on one hand makes sense for an organization of spies, but on the other leaves a lot of room for future storytelling starring these agents that I don't think we're ever really going to get. So far, Deceives only real story content has arrived with the release of new characters or maps. We haven't had a tome-style system which gives older characters newer and expanded stories. This makes sense because the game is so young, but if the game continues to flourish and grow, I'd love to see more story content starring older characters throughout the years. Especially ones with clear relevance to Deceive's bigger picture, like Madame, Hans, and Sosori. Maybe Deceive could take a leaf out of DBD's book and integrate future lore content into the game's battle pass system, which rotates every season with a new theme when a new character comes out. Right now we're in Season 2, with most of Deceive's cast getting cyberpunk-themed skins as part of the battle pass while Season 1 brought a theme of film noir that brought black and white skins along with the release of Red. Deceased Battle Pass has two important features that distinguish it from Dead by Daylight. It partially, but not entirely, refunds itself in bonds, the game's premium currency, and it isn't time-locked, meaning that even though Season 2 has started, Season 1's Battle Pass is still purchasable and you can still earn its rewards, meaning the FOMO associated with most Battle Pass systems doesn't really exist because you can do it whenever you want. This is a fantastic consumer-centric approach because it gives you as a player the best of both worlds. A key feature of the time-limited Battle Pass model is that even if you're not 100% sure that you want the stuff in the new Battle Pass, you have a good chance of still picking it up anyway because you might miss not having it later, with no guarantee it'll ever come back. Deceive giving you the time to complete it at your own pace, at your leisure, means there's not that mad dash at the end of a season to squeeze out the last little bits of progress. Much like the rest of the game, it's a very casual, friendly approach that's rare to see, when games like Overwatch 2 thrive on trying to monopolise your time. Deceased monetization is all around pretty solid. 
the game is paid at a reasonable price, agents and basic cosmetics can be bought with free currency or opened in cosmetic loot boxes a la Overwatch 1, and each cosmetic comes with a style swap but presents the same theme in a slightly different configuration, effectively giving you two skins for the price of one. In addition to the battle pass, a rotating shop exists with cosmetic options that change every day, and this is the only part of the season monetization that annoys me, because if you want a particular cosmetic and happen to miss the day it's in the store, there's a good chance you'll have to wait weeks to buy it again. And as they add more agents and more skins for more agents, those waiting times will only ever get longer. And I think the system is sustainable long term, and I hope at some point they reconsider it. In terms of other issues with the game, I don't really have many. By all accounts, Deceit tends to accomplish what it sets out to do. But if I had to call out one particularly thorny issue, it's the balancing. I don't even really mean there's a huge balance disparity between agents for the most part, the game receives constant balance updates and by all accounts it's alright. There's a few circumstances where that alright becomes not alright at all. This is most apparent in solo matches, where if you die, you die, with no possibility of resurrection. And as a result, a character who consistently win 1v1s is probably your best pick. Enter Chavez, the Crimson Jim without the Crimson, who has terrorised solo queue since day one. Chavez has always been a popular pick because he's a starter character and a fairly easy one at that, with a lot of his power budget consolidated into winning 1v1s with basically anybody else in the cast. His expertises and passive are all built around making him more durable, and that combined with the firepower and ease of use of his guns makes him pretty much capable of stat checking anyone in the cast to death. He will beat you not because of any bullshit mechanics or incredible skill expression, but just because his numbers are higher than yours. This becomes noticeable in solo queue, where 1v1's the name of the game, and Chavez's raw power as the stat stick means he wins 1v1's with basically anybody. And this has never been a Chavez exclusive problem. On launch, Red had a reputation for being extremely busted because she had an expertise that gave significant damage resistance and increased damage enemies took from her attacks. And Yumi is a character who's been awful for the majority of Deceive's lifespan, but recently has received some significant buffs and now, thanks to her healing expertise that lets her set up a passive healing station in combat, she can do what Chavez does and effectively stat check you to death by just having more effective health than you do. This really isn't helped by the fact that Deceive only has two one-shot abilities in the whole game, and Yumi herself has one of them. To be clear, it's not that the duelist characters in this game are all inherently problematic. Hans and Sasori are also close quarter specialists that don't fall into this problem because the interactions between them and the other players are much more skill expressive than me number high, you number not high. Hans's expertises disable the expertises of his opponents forces them to play a quote-unquote fair fight where they can't escape or use defensive abilities to protect themselves, but once he's used it, he still has to fight them properly. And much of Sasori's damage is loaded into his sword strike and careful positioning from anyone fighting him can keep you out of filleting range, especially if you get the jump on him. And the system cuts both ways too. Some agents really do feel like luster when you're playing a solo match, and Ace is the perfect showcase of that. I love Ace because she plays differently from every other agent in Deceive, being a sniper who looks at maps and situations in a way that no other character is rewarded for doing. This creates some issues in solos though, because the problem with playing a sniper character in a game where most of the fights happen at very close range should be self-evident. You take up a sniper's post, but you're not going to be able to one-shot someone you pick out of a crowd without the right upgrades, meaning they'll likely just take cover as soon as they get hit. Meanwhile, you've broken cover to do this, and any Madame, Red or Sasori within pissing distance is already on their way to turn you inside out, while you don't have the mobility to escape them or the close quarters prowess to fight them when they get there. And even if you do get that kill, you're probably a long way away to whoever's head you just exploded. Meaning you don't get the spy cache full of intel, health, ammo and other upgrades as quickly as other agents do who would kill at close range. But this isn't really an ace problem as much as a solo queue problem, because ace's weaknesses that cripple her in solos can be mitigated with a teammate or two, and she has some unique strengths that can only really flourish when she's playing with or against teams. Deceive in squads is a whole different ballgame from playing in solos, with the biggest change being the resurrect mechanic that lets you pick up down teammates at the cost of 25 permanent max health per resurrection, meaning you get three attempts to pick your teammates up. 
This is naturally a very powerful mechanic that makes playing the characters not easily spec for 1v1s like Ace and Larson a bit more forgiving, because you can go down and then get back up again. You ain't ever gonna keep me down. But the side effect of the resurrect mechanic allowing teams to make comebacks after losing someone is the big issue with teams that isn't present in solos. Body camping. This is particularly popular in trios. You find someone isolated at the start of the match, take them down as a team of three, and then just sit on the body for as long as you want. This forces the two remaining players on that player's team to do any objectives they try to do with a man down, meaning they're more likely to lose fights to other teams doing the same objectives. And three people camping one body makes getting resurrection almost impossible. Even if you do get a pickup, the poor sod on the floor is probably going right back down again, and since you're a player down, or worse, two players down, you're unlikely to be able to win a straight up fight with the campers either. Ironically, Ace is the best and quite possibly only real counter to body camping in Deceive. Because she can pick off campers at a significant distance, and due to being half a universe away, they won't be able to meaningfully fire back, force them to back off from the body if she can draw line of sight. Duos I think strike the perfect balance between solos and trios. While body camping does exist in duos, it's both far less prevalent and far less powerful, since a 1v2 over a down teammate is a lot more reasonable fight to take than a 1v3, and that one person can spend a little time grinding objectives to better take on the duo. And duos let agents pick playstyles and strategies to complement each other and compensate for each other's weaknesses to a degree that you can't in solo queue. Duos really is the best of both worlds, and in my opinion, it is the peak deceive experience. Although they have said that changes to the revive system to nerf body camping are coming soon, so that has a chance of helping trios out as well. Okay, uh, hi friends. Uh, you might have realised that a couple of things in this video uh, were inaccurate if you're a deceive player, and that'd be because uh, this video is meant to come out quite a bit earlier than it did. Um, it's meant to come out maybe early last week. But my PC changed his mind about um, working. This video was scripted and written back when things like body camping and ace were still kind of problems I wanted to talk about. So I want to correct the record now. In a recent update, Deceive has done three things that I thought were worth talking about. And those are uh, increasing the health threshold um, that you'll have after getting resurrected, which I've already talked about. Um, but they've also buffed ace, uh, buffed her damage quite considerably which means that she's actually pretty decent in solo queue now, to the point that she might be a problem in teams, because Chavez and Yumi and whatnot can still protect her, which is kind of a nightmare scenario. And the other one is body camping, where now you can resurrect your teammates uh, at the cost of intel, but at a distance, and bring them to you so that there isn't someone standing over their body ready to kill them as soon as they get picked back up. So yeah, they've already taken steps to address what I consider to be the game's biggest issues, um, literally just over a weekend. <laughs> so... Well, it's an exciting time, and I don't know how these changes will play out long term, but it looks pretty good so far. So, um, yeah, back to the video. One important thing to remember if you're queuing in duos or trios is that you can't select more than one of the same agent in your team. So if you happen to know that your duo partner still works the bed at 27, you know you won't be able to play last in this match. This encourages diverse team comp as opposed to just running three chavises every game, and it's things like this, this inevitable variety that makes every encounter that you have with a team potentially a different experience than the last one, that makes Deceive a thoroughly rewarding game to come back to. Truly, this game's success can be found more than anything else and how easy going it can be. It's a game that you could immerse yourself in completely or just dip your toes, and chances are if you're watching this video, a game you can dip in and out of is exactly what you're looking for. The mid-season balance updates and new map are looming and Season 3 is coming soon with talks of a brand new Disruptor, so maybe give Deceive a chance. Give it a go for yourself and you might be surprised how much you enjoy it. Look forward to seeing you out there. Although if everything goes to plan, you won't be seeing me. So that's everything I have to say about the fantastic Deceive Inc. If you're looking to pick it up, I believe there's a long weekend right now, which means there's a double XP event, which is quite nice, so could be a good chance to pick it up. In any case, sorry this took so long, my little uh, PC decommissioning. Uh, I did delay things a little bit, but I've not been lazy. I've written 20,000 words of script in the time it's been broken, and I cannot wait to stop turning these into videos, so it's going to be interesting September. To make sure you don't miss it, you can always do the old subscribing thing with my little notification bell so you don't miss the next upload, because it'll be coming soon. Special thanks to my wonderful patrons who help keep this channel running, and special thanks as well to Babbel, sponsor of today's video. 
learning a foreign language is something you're interested in doing, then take a look in the description or the pinned comment and you'll find a link to check out their services. So on that note, I guess I'll see you next time. Ta-ta for now.